What's up my brothers and my sisters from another mister? Although manga has been around for much longer than American comics, the latter has been more impactful in the last century. However, that was in the past. In recent times, manga has developed a respectable following for itself. Funny enough though, the areas where it has excelled in are where American comics fell behind and needs to catch up. So today our focus will be on what manga did right and what caused American comics to fall off as badly as time progressed. Yeah, records show that in 2020, the North American comic market generated $1.28 billion in revenue for the American comic industry. Courtesy of Google and not bad at all. However, it turns out that manga sector in Japan is far more lucrative. In the same year, Japanese manga authors and publishers made 5.6 bill in their native nation alone, courtesy of Google as well. Now when it comes to the popularity of American comics, American comics narrative has been impacted economically and artistically. In the last 25 years or more, the popularity, sales potential, and variety of comic content of all sorts produced in the US market have all been significantly impacted by the book format and the book trade. Since the 1930s when the superhero comics genre and the contemporary American comic book business, companies like Marvel and DC were created, North American comics have predominantly been distributed in the periodical format, the classic American comic book. In fact, at one time, the early American comics industry produced books in practically every genre. Comics thrived in newspapers, glossy magazines, and periodical formats mostly single panel human cartoons. Millions of copies of superhero comics headed by Superman and Batman respectively among others and others were sold. Still, pulp genres including comedy, children comics, crime, and others remained popular with the wide range of readers until the 1950s. That's when parents and children burned comic books in public gatherings and lead to the near destruction of the comic book industry. And we will revisit that later, I promise. And by the way, if you're liking the content we're throwing up so far, you know what to do. Like the video and subscribe to this channel. Don't be stingy. Here are Rated Comics. We do awesome comic book reviews, comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway. And also, check out RatedComics.com for some really cool Rated Comics exclusives and some other comic books as well to add to your comic book collection. With all that being said, now back into the content. The early impact of the internet and the World Wide Web brought fans together to promote their interest and the medium on a global scale. The web showed young fans and a few wiser ones as well. I mean, I got to be careful here not to get canceled. <laughs> I mean, that comics were more than superhero power fantasies designed for boys and a middle aged version of boys, or should I say, the wiser version of men too. Or whatever, you guys get what I'm talking about. And manga, licensed Japanese book format comics from Asia, offered a massive variety of comics created by and for young girls and women, a market that the North American superhero publishers had virtually ignored. Now, Manga versus American comics when it comes to presentation. Some readers might not care. However, what distinguishes the two comics is how they are presented. Manga is printed on inexpensive paper that resembles a newspaper and is released in black and white. Comics demonstrate the greatness by being presented on high quality paper, at least for the most part, that is not only colorful, but also enjoyed by readers who enjoy treating their books well. This doesn't mean that because comics are in color and manga is not, this does not make manga inferior to comics. Readers are forgiven to the black and white format of manga, but I believe it's because the stories are good. Not to mention to get started on manga, which is much more clear cut and easier. With manga, you start on volume one and you move on from there. In the case of Marvel and DC Comics, starting from volume one isn't the same and more difficult because of all the rebooting and new volumes, not to mention changing writers midway while manga keeps the same writers for characters. Now let's talk about the presentation on bookshelves. Manga seems to be way more organized than bookstores and also they're getting better distribution with Walmart and Target than comics, whereas with comics, I mean, I've noticed that they could be sometimes ransacked and unorganized and you just don't know where to start. But I might be exaggerating here, but you get the gist. Now, when it comes to character building, character development is another area in which manga excels. 
manga characters typically seem to get stronger with time. In contrast, the superheroes in comic books maintain their strength and only sometimes get stronger. The manga's emphasis on character development captures all readers' attention. Manga is a delight to read. Not taken away from American comics here, but what manga does is the reader is taken on an evolutionary journey of each character that reads. American comics are the big two, events don't last, and when characters die they come back in some way, shape, or form and or multiverses. No matter how well the story is written, it's part of the reason why I prefer indie comics. I mean, the big two always have a special place in my heart, but yeah, I'm gonna get back on track here. Now, when it comes to audience attraction, there are millions of fans and readers of both manga and comics, but did you realize there are more different types of readers in the former than the latter? I mean, of course you did. It is because manga authors offered very tales that appeal to teenagers and adults. Superheroes defending the world from evil is a central theme in American comics, mainly making it a popular topic among children and teens. Now, when it comes to pacing, in comparison to its American equivalents, the manga tale moves at a slower speed. Compared to the latter, there are fewer panels and discussion. The latter employs much too many conversations to sustain their readers' interest in the plot. I've read in comics where there was too much exposition, sometimes four to five pages of exposition, and it's like, we're gonna move forward with the story and I'm reading the comic like what kind of shit is that yeah it's exactly like that meme now when it comes to genres manga is clearly in the lead when experimenting with various genres you will find a range of genres as a reader including comedies thrillers action LGBTQ and more in addition manga also delves into explicit subjects like violence sex I like sex and others now the rise in manga's popularity what I didn't know before researching this is manga's piracy is on the rise, costing the Japanese manga industry billions. Worldly enough, what Japan is losing in piracy is worth more than the entire North American comic book industry. I don't know if that's something astounding, offensive, or if that's an indication of something. Hmm. No, honestly, I did not know about that before researching this because I haven't read manga, but Every time people come in the shop or ask me about manga, it's a topic that delves discussion. It has to be talked about. Now, part of the answer lies in manga's creations. Huge volume and subject matter diversity. Different manga is aimed at different audiences and is formally categorized as shonen, young boys, shoujo, young girls, and seinen, adult men, or jose, adult women. If I butcher any of those pronunciations, comment below, let me know. I apologize in advance, but hey, I'm trying here. Or can a brother get some credit for trying? <laughs> but anyways, back into the content. For example, one can choose from the family-friendly Doraemon series, serialized since 1969, the murky action of Gogo -Go 13, serialized since 1968, the post-apocalyptic drama Seven Seeds, serialized from 2001 to 2017, and innumerable science fiction works such as those produced by the long-standing Gundam franchises. Due to the diversity, virtually everyone is sure to find something that they enjoy. Most manga content is also easily accessible on inexpensive newsprint, in paperback, and increasingly online, which lowers production costs and increases its ability to reach a large audience. Manga's popularity is also attributed to the diversity of publishers and distribution channels that provide it, from huge conglomerates like Kodansha to niche publishers and gray area doujenshi. On the contrary, Marvel and DC hold a disproportionate market share for the English language comics. They have large largely restricted their attention to superheroes like Superman, the Fantastic Four, just to name a couple. Regardless of whether the genre is science fiction, fantasy, or historical fiction, additionally, they frequently recycle previous themes and rely on worn out narrative arcs, which confuses, if not outright bores, the fan. However, in general, especially in America, superhero characters still tend to wear spandex and capes. Which I'm okay with that, I mean, come on now. It, you grew up with it, a little bit of nostalgic, never hurt nobody. Remember when I mentioned the destruction of comics in the 1950s earlier? In the West, there was a moral panic about comic books in the 1950s, exemplified by the 1954 book Seduction of the Innocent, which claimed that comic books had a bad moral impact. As a result, publishers at the time created the Comics Code Authority, a voluntary self-censorship code. As a result, just a few genres have survived. Manga's popularity is also because it first appeared when there was a great deal of interest in media created by cultures other than one's own. This is not only an everyday occurrence. After the Meiji Restoration, 
Japanese painters gained greater influence from foreign works such as French Art Nouveau and early American newspaper cartoons and comics. But after World War II, when pieces of Anglo pop culture were easily accessible in Japan, Japanese creators' interest in foreign culture increased. These days, manga is better positioned to explore political issues than American comics are. Not only because Japanese political stances don't neatly align with the Western categories of left and right wing, and not only because manga creators tend to take a wide variety of political stances, but also because manga creators aren't typically punished for doing so or for not doing so. Even if Attack on Titan serialized from 2009 to 2021, can be interpreted as a defense of war crimes. As some detractors have suggested, it is nevertheless regarded by many as an excellent work that can be enjoyed independently of its politics. Now, are there any bright signs for American comics? Things are different on the other side of the Pacific. Marvel, DC, and other publishers in America eventually begin attempting to move past the restrictions of the past and focus on more serious contemporary issues. By the 2010s, this effort had intensified to the point that many fans and commentators felt it was interfering with or distracting from the story. American authors are increasingly placing their political opinions front and center in their works. Like we're being force fed and shoehorned this stuff. This type of current content, which is filled with overt agenda and frequently comes off as pompous virtual signaling, almost entirely in the woke or American leftist paradigm, alienates both the genre's longtime fans as well as those who have only recently discovered it. In my opinion, there's a time and a place for everything. When I want to read a story, I want to be entertained and escape a little bit, you know? Characters are reduced to merely being vehicles for political remarks, therefore it's no accident that this strategy has coincided with the overall fall in quality that American comics writer Chuck Dixon and others have remarked. The growing price of these publications make these problems even worse. Whether it's published by Marvel, DC, or one of the bigger independent publishers, the average cost of an issue has skyrocketed, stifling future expansion. This phenomenon alone explains why more English-speaking people are becoming fans of manga, but when others are considered, it's almost a perfect storm. Now here are my final thoughts. The comparison between the two shown above demonstrates how much better manga is than American comics. Manga offers readers everything they want, various genres, a compelling narrative, a satisfying conclusion, and depth. In my personal opinion, American comics are still good. And it better be because that's what this channel is all about, right? <laughs> Anyways, American comics are appealing to collectors with limited prints, ratios, and variants. Speaking of which, you can check out RatedComics.com for some really cool exclusives to add to your comic book collection. Because comic books as an investment strategy can be very lucrative. We also did do a video on that. Check out the link in the description after you watch this video as well. Not to mention there are some really good stories out there with American comics. It's part of the reason why I gravitate to the indie market, even though Marvel and DC always has a special place in my heart. Indie comics will continue to rise with popularity, especially with number one issues. The ability to have complete creativity on their books and the possibility to be optioned to various streaming platforms is a huge advantage to them. The future is bright for indie comic publishers as we are moving to a comic age where possibilities are endless. I still believe in the big two, especially when they're making huge blockbuster films based on the comics and I believe the films slash movies, the people consuming that content will gain interest in the source material. But manga seems to be much more captivating from the looks of it. American comics might yet reach the point where they can proudly compete with their manga equivalents. It will be complex though. Those who maintain the existing status quo risk suffering more consequences than just declining earnings or fan hatred as long as the qualities that have made manga so much popular are disregarded. Additionally, the window of opportunity for good transformation will sometimes be present if they know what to look for and they take advantage of that. And that is the end of this video. What you guys think of the video? Comment below, let me know. And what do you guys think? Do you think American comics will eventually catch up or surpass manga? Or you think manga is here to stay and will always dominate American comics? I don't think American comics is gonna fade away into darkness or anything like that. I think American comics always has a place because it just does. That's what I believe, especially when they're making big budget films. And the indie comic market is very intriguing in my personal opinion, but 
I'd like to hear you guys' opinions on this and also there's any other subject matter in the comic industry or comics or manga that you'd like to see this channel cover, let me know because here at Rated Comics we do awesome comic book reviews, comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway. And if there's any content like this you want me to cover down the line, let me know. Give us some time. I'll do my research and we'll go from there. Thank you again for watching. Until next time.